Hey everyone, Kevin here. I have a few new updates for you on the stimulus checks, the stimulus package, and everything related to the future stimulus packages, including that $2,000 per month and the interim package. So let's just jump right into the updates here. First of all, yes, deposits are still flowing for the stimulus checks. People are still getting scheduled for deposits. So just check your bank account every day. Even if the portal sucks and, and you're getting frustrated using it, if you don't check at off-peak hours, maybe just put it aside and just keep checking your bank account. Remember, it's going to be until the end of April before everybody gets their stimulus check through direct deposit. If you have not yet put your direct deposit information on the system, the best thing to do is just file your 2019 tax return electronically, but otherwise irs.gov slash EIP. All right, that's the basic stuff. We already know that. Go check that, keep trying, but don't try too often, otherwise you get locked out. It's like a catch 22 here, you know? Now, before I get to the updates on the newer $2,000 per month stimulus package, the proposed one and some of the other bills and the interim bill. Let me give you a few other updates here. The Treasury Department just announced today that they're working directly with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, so the VA, to ensure that veterans and their beneficiaries who receive compensation and pension benefit payments will receive their stimulus payments automatically without any additional paperwork. This is good. However, at the bottom of that press release, they still encourage you to use the tool for non-filers to input your direct deposit information. So that portal might actually speed things up for you. Again, go to irs.gov slash EIP. There's a section specifically for non-filers and one for filers. If you're not required to file a tax return and you're a veteran, even though you don't have to, or you're receiving SSI or whatever, even though you don't have to use this portal, you may as well, because they're sort of implying things are going to go faster by saying, many non-tax filing beneficiaries have already begun using the non-filers enter payment information tool to provide basic information. There will be no interruption to payments being processed using this tool, but veterans with internet access are encouraged to continue providing information, AKA, Use those portals, irs.gov slash EIP. All right, what else is going on? I was reading some of the comments in our public Discord chat, which you're welcome to join as well. People are kind of sharing their updates and experiences, and it looks like some folks, even as of today, are still receiving their EIDL disbursements, those $1,000 grants per employee that you have. The SBA has run out of funding for that. They are not taking any more applications, but it does look like since people are still getting processed for payments, that if you put your application in, you might still see that money show up. So that's good news. One person who had their EIDL $1,000 fund deposited, their grant deposited, had their credit run yesterday. So if you use like Credit Karma or something like that, you may as well check. Although not everybody is having their credit run before getting their EIDL funds. I had my credit frozen, always recommend you freeze your credit, and I still got my EIDL funds, which at first I was told I was going to be skipped. All right, now let's talk about Congress. Here's the thing. Congress is holding on to this new, beautiful $2,000 per month stimulus package that I introduced to you a few days ago. And heck, that video is still on the trending tab of YouTube. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. So first of all, thank you all for supporting the channel. Like, I'm just like, whew, that's the first time a video of mine's ever been on trend. I, like I mentioned this in my last video. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. But anyway, the $2,000 per month stimulus package is in Congress. And that new bill gets sent first to the Ways and Means Committee where they determine if there are any appropriations for this kind of bill. Basically, who's got the money to pay for this crap before we even start talking about it? Which we all kind of just look up these days and go, hey, Jerome, come on, turn the printer up a little bit more. We need some more money over here. And, and then it just happens. I think he's just up there and go, you got it. <laughs> But anyway, that, that's that's where that bill is right now. But we do have an update from one of the representatives who authored the bill. Tim Ryan is one of the co-authors of this bill, and this was him on Fox News talking about this. And keep in mind, he is a Democratic representative, and he was on Fox News here. So let's go ahead and listen in uh, just to see what he says here grocery worker, the truck driver, these people need some help. And it, you know, it's always okay if the, the big dogs need some help. They always seem to get it. And when are we going to help the person on the ground that's making the country move right now that are in, in very risky situations? It's time for us to help the cop, the firefighter, the retail worker that's out at the local grocery store. It's their turn. All right. Now, I know that might not seem like the grandest update ever, but you might have missed the actual update. The update on that $2,000 stimulus package from the last video that I made about this introducing it 
is that we actually have a co-author on primetime Fox News talking about it. And pretty much everything is prime time now because everybody's stuck at home. But what's so crucial about this is the more people are talking about this $2,000 stimulus package per month, the more likely it is to happen. How do I know this? Look back at March. What happened between March 15th and March 27th? March 27th was the day the CARES Act was passed. The first stimulus package. It was really the third stimulus package, but it was the, the big one that we're all aware of, the one that's giving us checks, basically. Well, what happened between the 15th and 27th? of March. Well, most of us were home. The highways were dead. The roads were dead. People were actually staying inside. Nobody was protesting stay at home orders. And at the same time, people were freaking out because circuit breakers are tripping in the stock market. The Dow's losing thousands of points a day. We've got stocks dropping 10 to 20% a day. That kind of fear had everybody so panicked, so extremely highly emotionally panicked that guess what happened in Congress? Democrats and Republicans actually worked together and passed the bill. Oh my gosh. What's the problem though? The problem is right now, even though it's pretty clear that we're going to be in a recession and even though we're expecting earnings to suck going forward, what do we have right now? Hope and optimism compared to what we had last month. And unfortunately, guess what hope and optimism do? They create infighting between Republicans and Democrats, which you might say, well, Kevin, where do you see hope and optimism? Like people are still dying. If you have not heard about the Gilead trials, you might wanna watch this video down below where I broke that news yesterday. Successful treatment trials for COVID-19 are looking very, very promising. Yeah, it might be anecdotal, but the stock market shot up on this breaking news in after hours yesterday and throughout the day today. We had some of the biggest losers gain five to 11% in their values. Some companies like AMC shot up over 30% in value just today because of the Gilead trials, which means we have hope and optimism. Hope and optimism means less cohesiveness in Congress. And how do I know that? Well, let's look at Congress and see what the heck is going on right now. Republicans are sending letters like this, pointing the fingers at Democrats for holding up additional funding to the interim bill for the payroll protection program. The payroll protection program is that program with the forgivable loans. Be very careful with this, by the way. I made an entire video talking about the pitfalls of the forgivable portion of this loan. So if you're getting this loan, don't get ripped off. If you don't care about this loan, don't worry about it. Just focus on what's happening in Congress here, which the quick summary is Republicans are sending letters to Nancy Pelosi going, yo, stop holding this up. We need our $250 billion to keep the PPP funded. We need this money ASAP so we can keep lending money and keep giving people a paycheck. There's all, there are battles going on on Twitter everywhere about this right now. To which the Democrats responded with, with this letter dated April 17th, on behalf of our state and local and tribal governments, it is essential that you include robust, dedicated, flexible funding to all units of state and local governments in the next interim emergency package to support the ongoing efforts for blah, blah, blah. Basically, the Democrats are saying, yo, we need additional funding for our cities, our firefighters, our police, and the people working in the community to help make all of this happen. It's not just small businesses, it's all of the infrastructure that needs money as well. Let's pass money for both things. Let's give money to the cities and municipalities and states and small businesses. To which the Republicans come back and say, let's just pass the small business package first and deal with that next. And the Democrats are like, no, because we think you're just gonna leave us high and dry. If we pass the small business one, then you're gonna give us the finger on the other things. And that's called Congress. But my point is not to take the side, the left, the right, the middle. I don't care what side you're on. The point is everybody was on the same side last month and we got the CARES Act passed in record speed, which I know record speed for Congress is, I mean, it's still Congress, okay? It still took like three weeks. But we've been fighting over this for almost two weeks now. And this is just the interim bill. This is just additional funding. $2,000 a month as a stimulus package? We will need some very bad news, in my opinion, for us to actually see that $2,000 per month stimulus package. Now look, 
I would love for us to see it. And by it, I mean, I would love for us to see the stimulus package, not more bad news, because I made a whole video showing you how you could turn that $2,000 a month into a million dollars. It's actually a really good video. You should check it out. But this is a problem. In my opinion, the Gilead news makes any hope for cohesiveness and bipartisanship in Congress much, much less likely, which again is bad. Let me know what you think about the Gilead trials in the comments below. If you'd like more information or another video on that, also let me know down below. I'd love to put another one together on Gilead. So there you have the latest and greatest as of April 17th, and a lot of this is fresh off the press. So thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Get your free quote for life insurance link down below. By the way, you can get two free stocks if you deposit just $100 with Weeble. You have the chance of getting two stocks valued up to $1,400 if you just deposit $100. Also use that coupon code down below, join me in my programs. Thanks so much, and until next time.